Davis, Neutrogena soap. So he always had this little essence of uh, that clean, fresh smell of Neutrogena soap. Their cells are going to go up, aren't they? <laughs> You're welcome, Neutrogena. Yeah. Uh, somebody called the Graceland Gift Shop. Uh, <laughs> Neutrogena in there. Uh, as we know, if we've read your book, which, by the way, thank you for finally putting your story out. Wonderful experiences. You are obviously an award-winning songwriter, lyricist now, uh, known for that now. But you were writing lyrics and didn't realize, really, you thought you were writing poetry for Elvis. But he recognized. Yeah, I used to write him love sonnets and poetry. And he would often say to me, honey, this is beautiful. I love this one. Can I have someone put this to music? Because, as you know, Elvis didn't write music. He just you know, made it come to life. He stylized every song that he ever did and made it his own. So he didn't even need to write. But um, he would say, let me have someone put this to music and I'll record it. And in my naivete, and just trying to keep something personal, you know, between us that wasn't shared with the world, I would say, no, honey, you know, this is just private between you and me. Had I known about music publishing and royalties, I might have been a little bit more mercenary in that, yeah. and, you know, and, and let him do it. And, and even beyond that, there's a Christmas song that I wrote called Grown Up Christmas List. And that was Elvis's favorite holiday, it's Christmas. You guys know that song, Grown Up Christmas List? So it's been recorded by Barbara Streisand, Natalie Cole, Kelly Clarkson, Amy yeah. Grant, Michael Bublé. Like every artist, um, it, feel, it feels like, has recorded that song. But I would have loved to have heard Elvis's beautiful voice singing those words, you know. So it would have been um, very gratifying for me if I had let him record some of my uh, tunes. Yeah. But I, did, I didn't know enough. I was ignorant and naive. <laughs> He recognized, though. He that. did, yeah, he did. He recognized the talent, and um, so he helped me in so many ways. I, I said I went to four years of university at Memphis State. It was Memphis State University, and now it's University of Memphis. But I finished four years of college and didn't learn a, a modicum of what I learned with Elvis. You know, Elvis was such an incredible teacher of life and of how to, just the kind of person that, you know, you should aspire to be. And I was going to tell you, too, when I was writing my memoir, I, I waited like 40 years, you know, after that was passed away. I didn't want to exploit my relationship with him, so I didn't write anything for 40 years, and then I waited until I'd gone through my life circumstance with the former Bruce Jenner. And I thought I had my normal life. I left Elvis for a normal life. <laughs> thought I found it. <laughs> for about hot five minutes <laughs> with Bruce and my two beautiful sons. I wouldn't change anything, you know. I trust life. I trust God that life unfolds as it's meant to. And looking back, I would have made the same choices. You know, I had no idea about Bruce at the time. But I'm glad I didn't know because I, I wouldn't have Brandon and Brody and, and, and my four beautiful little grandchildren. So I've learned to, to distrust, you know. To trust life and trust God and let life unfold as it's meant to and then just make the best of it, you know, and, and you don't always have to understand something to just be kind about it. So I, that's what I've tried to be is just be kind. And I was going to tell you when I, thank you, when I wrote my memoir, I had an admonition to myself. I said, is it true? Is it necessary to tell the story? And is it kind? So with those three things in mind, I was able to sit down and recount some of the things that have happened to, to me and for me in my life. And but it was a it was it wasn't a, a joyful thing. It was very difficult. I don't know if any of you have written about your lives, but it's a tremendous responsibility to do justice to other people, to tell the truth, you know, but to still to, to, to do it with kindness um, and to try to have some sort of inspirational slant to the book. Now, later today, 5 o'clock, there's going to be an event that I know a lot of us are going to, and I, I don't want to end on you know a note like that, but I just wanted to get your favorite, uh, and I don't want to intrude on whatever you'll say uh, this afternoon, but for the people here that might not be going, just your um, first impressions of your, just a, a wonderful Lisa Marie experience. Yeah, you know, I had nothing but wonderful experiences with Lisa Marie. From the time I first met her, 
until the last time I saw her. I had nothing but wonderful encounters with her and heartwarming exchanges. She was a phenomenal human being. She was, I mean, incredibly loved by her daddy. Elvis adored her. And we would go in at night and tuck her in and call her Goober Nickel. We had all these little pet names for her. And, you know, I've heard her do interviews where she said, oh, I was a terror. You know, I was a, I was a little brat. She really wasn't. My, my experience with her was always that she was affectionate and sweet and listened. You know, she was just, I thought she was a perfect little child. I just adored her. And I, the first time I ever met her, I was at, um, at Truesdale. And I had just started living with Elvis, and he said, I want you to meet Lisa, and wanted her to meet me. So he said, Lisa, this is my new girlfriend. This is Linda, and hi, Linda, and she was very shy. And then after a few minutes, she had very long brown hair. I like to say it's when I dyed it brown. <laughs> Before I went back to my natural blonde. <laughs> but truly, it was long and brown. <laughs> And so she came up and then said, Linda, can I brush your hair? And I said, of course, sweetheart. And I was like, oh my God, she wants to brush my hair. So she went up to the house and got a brush and started brushing my long brown hair. And that's how we very first met. And our relationship was solid and lovely the, the entire time I knew her. And I, I found her to be exquisitely beautiful and so talented and so real. I think the most um, resounding thing about Lisa Marie is that she was so authentic and I mean she you never had to second guess how she was feeling sometimes you know to a fault you go you don't <laughs> bring it down a little but she you know she was so authentic so honest and I loved that about her you never had to wonder where she stood on anything well thank you for being a part of that uh, this afternoon